Welcome to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. My name is Tim Murray, President and CEO of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. And Chamber Exchange, a TV show, is an opportunity for us to, to bring on guests that uh, are very important to issues around economic development and activity uh, here in the region. Uh, and I want to thank Bank Hometown, who helps make, uh, make it happen. I'm pleased to help uh, have in this segment Peter Stady, who's the Senior Vice President and Commercial Lending Center Manager at Rockland Trust. Peter, welcome. Thanks so much, Tim. Glad to be with you. Yeah, well, I want to just, uh, in, in full disclosure, a uh, member of the Chamber Board as well. So uh, <laughs> we want right. to acknowledge your, your volunteer efforts in that regard. But um, your role as Senior Vice President, uh, you're not new to the banking industry, somebody who's been in the career for a number of years. Certainly, yeah. Uh, again, thanks for having me, Tim. I appreciate you know spending the time uh, today. And um, yeah, I've been in banking in Worcester for about 20 years now. Uh, the last four have been at Rockland Trust. Uh, Rockland's a 115-year-old plus uh, financial institution, commercial bank, uh, headquartered on the South Shore. More recently, we moved into Worcester in 2018 uh, with a commercial lending office. And since then, we've built out you know three branches here in Worcester proper: Grove Street. Grafton Street and Park Ave in Webster Square, and we've uh, expanded east on Route 9 in Shrewsbury and now in Westboro on Lyman Street. Yeah, and a, and a, and a pretty big uh, bank in terms of kind of asset uh, we assets, are, right? We are. We're one of the larger banks uh, headquartered in Massachusetts, just over $19 billion in assets. Um, you know, again, we've been around a long time and really founded by uh, business owners who couldn't get banking services on the South Shore at the turn of the century and, and launch their own bank. So commercial bank, uh, it's what we do. It's, it's you know, our, our bread and butter. And, and Rockland uh, is a municipality in the South Shore, so I, I, I'm going to be a detective here and assume that's the, where it all started. Uh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but obviously, as you mentioned, the bank has grown uh, in, in, in Eastern Mass, but a, a strategic decision a few years back to, to grow in the area and in rapid succession. Uh, office, corporate office, uh, downtown, and then uh, the, the branches. Yeah, and it's been a great uh, you know, success story for the bank, and, and Rockland's really been interested in this Worcester market for a long time. Uh, they've looked at some acquisitions that didn't pan out, and um, you know, after uh, falling through on a couple acquisitions, they thought it was best to, to get into this market with a, with a really ground up build. It's been right. great. Right. And you know, and as somebody who's a, a seasoned, experienced banker, um, kind of interesting times. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Interest rates have gone up, and, and that has kind of impacted uh, deal flow or what you can approve, or maybe some people, mm -hmm. businesses or individuals, kind of a little hesitant. Um, but so interesting times. It certainly is, and you know, obviously, you know, there was a, a significant disruption in banking uh, back in, in March with you know Silicon Valley Bank and some others that right. um, ran into some liquidity challenges, and you know, their their business model is so different from Rockland Trust where. You know, they had very large deposits from very few depositors. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, uh, you know, rise in interest rates, some securities that were, uh, had lost some value that they needed to liquidate to, to provide liquidity. Um, you know, I think of It's a Wonderful Life. And in the 1940s, a, a run on the bank was everybody lining up to, right, to take right. out their, you know, $30 in their, their uh, account uh, yeah. at the building and loan. But in today's day and age, you know, a few keystrokes and, you know, tens or hundreds of millions right. of dollars can, can leave the bank and you know it was just the an avalanche that, that happened very quickly. Right. But the, the, the thing is you know, that's kind of a bit of the anomaly what we saw you know that particular situation which many people say was unique but you know we've got you know banks like Rockland and c community banks that are in the area that are you know uh, much more sound fundamentally sound banking practices you know diverse portfolios uh, you know, regulated, uh, you know, but both the federal and state level and in good health. Absolutely. And really it speaks to our, our customer base. You know, we, we have local clients that we've banked for many, many years. Um, you know, very relationship driven business that mm -hmm. we're in. Um, it's not a transactional business at Rockland Trust or many of the community banks. So those relationships tend to be very sticky. Um, certainly, you know, when March happened, uh, there was some um, hesitance and there was a little bit of, you know, money that moved out uh, on the deposit side. But, you know, quite honestly, we also had calls from SVB clients um, who all of a sudden needed a, a new financial institution. And we took in many, many deposits as well. Yeah. And, and that's where a bank, you know, if you're kind of size and scale would be beneficial to maybe companies that might have been doing business with SVP because you've got a size and sophistication that not all banks do. Absolutely, and you know we have a, a great suite of services on the deposit side, treasury management, um, 
you know, one thing that did come out of, of you know, the spring uh, banking season was, you know, a lot of people were concerned about insurance um, and, you know, how safe are their right. deposits. And, you know, at Rockland, we do have products that actually can fully insure all deposits above the FDIC 250 through an insured cash sweep, yeah. where it's just a, an interchange of, of trading deposits among other banks to, to spread that exposure. Got it, got it. Um, and the other piece is, you know, it's, it's hard to predict, you know, with the economy. I think this has probably been the, the most challenging uh, five, six years in the history of economies, <laughs> economists who try to predict what's going to happen. But, sure. you know, just some numbers today about the, the GDP and the job growth continues to be strong. Uh, and so there's some very positive uh, numbers that have been coming out, but still there's a, with interest rates and, you know, things happening around the globe, it's just mm -hmm. a, a kind of a challenging time, right? It, it definitely is. And what we've noticed on the development side, particularly, you know, two or three years ago, you could borrow money in the threes and it was very easy to, yeah. to get a deal to work. Um, you know, these days in a seven plus percent interest rate environment, you know, a lot of uh, developers have gone pencil down and, you know, just kind of biding their time and waiting for, you know, hopefully a pullback in rates. And depending on who you listen to, it could be sometime next year, but maybe not for a couple of years. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see well, how that plays out. Well, thanks out. for, you know, for sharing that, because one of the things at the Chamber, you know, we're talking about when we, whether we're, we're working with, talking with municipal leaders or state leaders that, you know, uh, we, who want, we want to create more housing. We want businesses to grow and expand. Um, we want new investment into the region, but, you know, factors in that whole process, a company is going to do a, a budget and they're going to make projections and they're going to look at what's the interest rate in terms of borrowing money to do this project or do this expansion, uh, supply chain issues, construction mm -hmm. costs. So uh, all these things affect margins and, and ultimately you as a bank or any other bank are going to really kind of do your due diligence and scrutinize that to make sure the numbers work. Absolutely. That's, uh, you know, what we do all day, every day. Right. And, um, you know, we're there to, to advise business owners and uh, and developers and you know sometimes things still work and the the capital stack is right and there's a good profitable opportunity and other times you know as we're seeing some folks are, are you know slowing down or, or being a little more careful with their investments and so with a viewer who might not be familiar with that term capital stack what, what would that what's a media definition or description of that piece? yeah so if we're talking to a, a business and you know they have a, a an equipment financing need you know it's how much of in? their own money are they putting in and how much are they asking a bank to fund right and you know as interest rates go up you know generally the the ability to service debt uh, you know goes down you think of your mortgage right you know there are a lot of folks out there with a three percent mortgage from a right. couple of years ago you had a lot of buying power at three percent today's mortgage rates are in the sevens so your your buying power has been reduced yeah, and that's and a great same. analogy so if you're borrowing at seven percent that's going to eat into more of your kind of discretionary household budget than otherwise and a business is no different and that will color whether you make a decision to go forward or buy or expand or as you said pencil down and wait mm -hmm. and really what we collectively want the business community people who are in government generally you want activity and, and that means you know people are working the supply chains are activated so when there are policy decisions that are made that compound costs to things like interest rates and others, it can slow things down. It can, and that's where it's very important that you have a banking partner who understands your business and who you know is there for you in the ups and downs. Because in the economy and in life, you know there there are great times and there are some not so great times, right. and it's important that you have a bank that really takes the time to appreciate the relationship they have with their client, understand what they yeah. do and is there to support them when they need it. Well, we'll stick on that note, good times, but uh, you know, but good uh, community involvement with Rockland. You're involved in a variety of different ways, kind of giving back and supporting different initiatives in the community as well, right? We absolutely are. And you know, our lending team, downtown Worcester, um, you know, everybody's very active in the community. Um, you may have seen us at Polar Park this year. Yeah. We have Rockland Trust Plaza um, on yeah. the Green Street side of the, the park where we've activated that with some uh, events all summer right. long. and. Uh, this year, year to date through now October, uh, we've funded almost $200,000 to about 45 not-for-profit organizations right here in central Massachusetts. So those investments that we make in the community are really, um, you know, for the betterment of, of the folks that we are, you know, doing business with and, and uplifting the community. Yeah, and for many of those non-profits, those, those type of contributions are kind of make or break in terms of being able to deliver important services that, you know, kids, families, programs, people need. Absolutely, and that's a, a primary focus is, is, you know, children, financial literacy, um, you know, those are, those are areas of, of importance for us. Great. 
Peter Stady, Senior Vice President and Commercial Lending Center Manager at Rockland Trust here in uh, Worcester and Central Mass. Great for, uh, grateful that you're with us today. Thanks very much, Tim. And I just want to mention that uh, we will be sponsoring again the Holiday Business After Hours on December 14th at uh, Bay right. State Brewery uh, right. at the Worcester Ice Center. So hopefully uh, we see a lot of uh, chamber members and guests. Yeah, we look, well, forward, we look, to look forward to that. Bay State Brewery, uh, a very popular destination. Absolutely. Good, yeah. Come back, we're going to be right with us in our second segment. These days, you've got your hands full in life. That's why we help you bank simply and securely with tools like Face ID and Touch ID. It's why we make it easy to make purchases on the go and get cash back while you're at it. Why we help you quickly deposit checks wherever you are. And it's why we lend a hand with sending and receiving money right from your phone. So even when you're on the move, you can manage your finances. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential.